Good morning, community. Jill here with North Texas Vegetable Gardening Canning Recipes. A little bit of everything. It's a little more chillier today than it was yesterday. Yesterday it was 59 degrees when I got up this morning. It's 50, a little brisk, but I'm loving it. We are so very dry here in North Texas. So although everything's gonna probably be going into dormancy, we must keep things watered. This is my pear tree. There's that moon. And we got quite a few pears off of it this year, and it's because we had such a wet spring. So it's very important that even though these things are going to go into dormancy, that we keep them watered during the winter because uh, the year we had the drought year before last, uh, we didn't get any pears off of this tray, none. So the sun's coming up behind me. Guys, there is no rain in the forecast for us for the next 10 plus days. And in fact, uh, midweek, we're supposed to get up into the upper 80s again. Um, this is just so sad, I guess, because we don't like 80 degree temperatures and 90 degree temperatures in October, especially toward the end of October. I don't know if that's got me so I'm out here watering, and Pop does this during the week for me. Keeps everything watered in because uh, the heat is still on here in North Texas, and I don't see any anywhere where it's gonna lighten up on it. My Contari bush beans are looking pretty good out here, guys. They're gonna be loaded in another couple of weeks. Yeah, you can see them coming in in there. So it's been about, let's see seven weeks since I planted them. They should come to fruition at about eight to nine and keep coming to fruition for a couple of, couple of rounds of a harvest. Look at this. See, they are looking really, really good. Oop. How exciting is this that I see green beans coming in. So I'm glad I planted these in this raised bed because we wanted to get one more harvest since we didn't get a lot um, in the spring due to lots of rain and the wind and having to replant. And also uh, we've had a problem with the Blue Lake bush beans. So these are the Contari, C-A-N-T-A-R-E, I think, or maybe C-A-N-T-A-R-A, -A -A, I don't know. But anyway, Contari. Um, these are, are doing quite well, and uh, we will plant these again in the spring, but I'm just glad we have some coming in right now. Yes, 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 we're gonna have some green beans. And you can see they are just loaded, loaded with blooms. Have some nice looking bell peppers out here in the little high tunnel. Loving these, it's so strange how these come in. Guys, like crazy right before our first freeze. And this year, we really don't know when that's gonna be, even though we got close the other day. So this morning, I'm planting carrots since we are a little cooler at nights. And um, I do the broadcast spread just like I did with my onions. And so I'm just gonna sprinkle these in a container. And uh, we've had very good luck at growing our carrots in a container. In fact, we planted them here last year in that raised bed and they did very well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some in some of these uh, containers inside the little high tunnel because I also uh, will plant more just like I am gonna do the onions in January. So I will get an early harvest um, and then I'll, I'll get one probably a mid-summer harvest. So um, we're trying to keep things rotating and keeping your tubs filled with something is uh, the absolute best way um, to keep your soil good. And in fact, your root crops improve the soil like your beets and your onions and your carrots. They improve the soil that you plant in because they go in and aerate it and break it up and kind of makes you know that the Lord knows what he's doing because our root crops are always planted in the fall and in the winter when uh, the, the soil would be fallow waiting for your spring and summer crops. So that's the brilliant thing about your root crops, whether it's beets, turnips. Wow, there's a bumblebee in here. Whether it's beets, turnips, um, onions, carrots, your root crops strengthen your soil and break it up and aerate it and get it ready for you to plant in your spring. So let's get started. 
So Greg went in and uh, fortified my buckets this week. So now I'm breaking up the soil because you want some really good loose soil. I've also been watering it throughout the uh, these last couple of days. So it's damp, it's moist, and it's ready um, to take on my seeds because with carrot seeds, like I said, you broadcast spread and a lot of you cover it with, um, with cardboard to keep it damp, but I don't do that. I just uh, sprinkle my seeds on top and then I just sprinkle uh, more soil on top of that uh, to kind of work them in and kind of cover them up just a little bit because you don't want to cover them and let them get too deep or they won't germinate. So I know um, a lot of you have had some issues with germination this this fall and it's because of our heat here in Texas. It's just been too much. So hopefully, hopefully these cool nights are gonna help our efforts to put some things in the ground this weekend and um, get some things going so that we will have some produce and some food growing. And here's my seeds here. And that we will have an early harvest and then we can turn right around and replant um, sometime in January, which is not too far away. January is also when we start our tomato seeds and our pepper seeds and all that for our plant sale that we usually have um, sometime in March. So pray for our success there. So we want to make sure and get this soil broken up. All right, so I got my soil ready. Now let's just go ahead. And these are my seeds. I'm just gonna sprinkle them around. All the way. Now we're gonna do this one. I think I have enough to do about four tubs and that's probably enough for right now. I don't want to waste my seed. I wanna make sure that these are gonna germinate. And I can always thin them out afterwards, but guys, I'm not uh, real big on thinning out. I will pull the carrots as they're ready and leave the other ones in there and they tend to keep on growing. I'm um, just call it Good Lord's hand upon it. So, okay. So I got four tubs. Yeah, you know what? I got enough to do one more. I'm gonna go ahead and do this last tub here. We want to make sure that we have food growing, my friends. Because uh, we don't know where this old world is going, except in the wrong direction as far as I'm concerned. no matter what. So let's go ahead and get these put in there. Got them planted, I'm gonna water them in a little bit, then I'm gonna cover them up with some light soil and water again. This just gives them a light covering after I've watered them in real good. Give them a little bit of protection but we don't want to cover them too much. Because we want them to germinate. And we should see, probably, this time next weekend, how well we did. All right, so I got it. Got them watered in real good. I'll have to come out here several times today, and then Greg and Pop will have to watch them this week when I'm at work. It's very exciting to come out here and look and see at all the things still growing, getting a little reprieve, you know, from the 100 degree temperatures. But this uh, this paprika pepper, this beautiful, I believe it's the Alma variety, is just so tasty, not just for making paprika, but also for salads and stuff. The flavor of this is just simply delicious and these are still going strong. We have some gorgeous oregano growing out here. I mean, my goodness, it just smells so, so delicious and so good. So the world's starting to wake up. It's 7.43. So our sun is not coming up until well after seven. Time will change, I think, the weekend after Halloween. Um, I don't like this daylight savings time. I like standard time. I'm gonna have to do some research on that and figure out 
why they would do something so silly because I need to get my work done in the morning when it's daylight, not in the evenings, especially here in Texas because we're still 100 degrees several hours after the sun goes down, so it's better for us to get everything done in the morning. So we're under a very high fire danger um, because of the winds. Yesterday, they were very strong south winds. It wasn't too hot, but uh, with the winds and the dry, we it's just... It's just, I don't even know what to say, guys. I'm just so tired of not having a normal precipitation year. The next thing I'm going to plant is I'm going to make myself a salad bowl out of this small raised bed, guys. I'm going to put some radishes in there and two varieties of lettuce. Here's what my radish seed looks like. I'm just going to make little finger holes in there, and then I'm just going to pop these in there. But my lettuces are going to be broadcast spread just like I did the carrots and the onions. I'll go in and fill in the middles here because we want lots of radishes. We love our radishes in our salads. And this little raised bed's gonna be perfect to make us a salad bowl. I'm, I don't think I'm gonna do cabbage, guys. If I do, I'll do it inside the little high tunnel or I'll do it in one of these other raised beds after we're able to pull some stuff out. Got my radish seeds in there. Now I'm gonna put some Lola Rosa red lettuce and I'm gonna plant some Paris Island. A lot of seeds in that packet, so let me show you what I'm gonna do. So I've just disturbed the top of the soil and I'm gonna broadcast spread. And Miss Bear wants to eat them out of my hand. And then we're just gonna lightly cover it. We're gonna do the same with this Paris Island. And then we're gonna water it in. Now we can thin this out as it starts to come up. Now then, just cover it up a little bit. And then, now we're gonna water it in. Next is a winter and fall favorite, purple top turnips. Guys, you can eat the greens on these or you can eat the turnips. We like them both. We like the greens sauteed or in a salad, and we like the turnips also in a salad or baked. I don't know if you know this, but turnips are often used as a potato substitute for those on low-carb diet. You can make mashed turnips, and they taste pretty much like mashed potatoes. You're going to find a lot of your fall and your winter variety seeds all look alike. Your beet seeds are going to look like this, your turnip seeds, your radish seeds, your broccoli seeds, uh, your cauliflower seeds. They're all little round pods. <laughs> so we're going to, I'm only going to plant half of this because I think I'm going to save the other half maybe for something else, maybe like some celery. I'm going to ponder that. But we're going to just broadcast spread these all the way around. And again, we can thin them out, but I think I may be, I got a big pack of turnip seeds and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw some on that back acre <laughs> because again, your root crops are perfect to work on your soil and to break it up and aerate it and keep it nourished deer in, uh, deer in the winter time and uh, Purple top turnips are often used as a cover crop. So keep that in mind if you're looking to do a cover crop. So let's water this in. I know it's not much, but I feel quite accomplished this morning, guys. So I got carrots in, I got some radishes in, I got two varieties of lettuce, I got some purple top turnips, and, uh, and I'm gonna ponder on what I'm gonna do with the other half of that raised bed. Now I've got some vacant tubs in that little high tunnel that I'm gonna ponder on too. Um, on what maybe I can put in there. It's going to take me some time to think, though. Now I got to go get ready for church, go worship the Lord, and uh, just wanted to give you guys an update and show you what I've been planting. I still may do some, some cabbage somewhere. I'm just not sure. I know that my radishes and my lettuces are very quick growers. So are turnips, actually. But my lettuces, Miss Bear, get out of there. And my radishes, um, she's hunting rats. My, my lettuces and my radishes will be ready in about 28 to 32, 33 days. So we'll be having us some lettuce, some salad from our lettuce bowl up there. So if you got a raised bed 
that's vacant right now. Go ahead and make you a little salad bowl. Um, yeah, I think, excuse me, I think I'm gonna try to do some celery maybe in that other half today. I think that sounds like a really good idea. And then I'll have me some salad makings. We're trying to eat better, trying to do better with Greg's high blood pressure. I've got high blood pressure. We've got the cholesterol issue going on and we don't want to take them statins and we're not gonna take them statins. So we're trying to think of ways um, to, to do better things for our lives than to, to be on pharmaceuticals. But anyway, we love you and uh, wanted to give you guys an update. We will see you soon and um, get to planting guys. It's nice and cool. We'll get to planting this week. And uh, hopefully, hopefully the Lord's going to bless us with some rain. And he's going to uh, bless us with some cooler temps. See you soon.